Let's start out because what I really want to show you here is the speed at which these different AI systems can work at. So at GPT-4, we're going to start with this prompt. Now I have a complex prompt. It's not horribly complex, but it's going to give multi parts back, right? So here's the prompt that I'm going with. I have 4 million customer logins and 5,000 workforce logins. I currently have SiteMinder install, I have a typo in here, install -er, I'm going to leave it, installed to protect all my internally hosted web applications. I'm switching to Fordrock Access Manager via Identity Cloud. Give me the details on how to convert from SiteMinder to Access Manager and also write a shell script to install and configure an identity gateway. The identity gateway should transform the AM auth headers to look like a SiteMinder header so that the background apps don't have to be updated. Assume any unknowns and deliver technical results with full code. Also make any recommendations for tuning the given for tuning the given environment for what? Uh, this is not right. <laughs> also make any recommendations for tuning the given Oh, for tuning, for tuning, comma, given the identity count. Okay, even I couldn't figure out what that meant. So let's see what this thing does. Okay, here we go. So ready? We're going to kick off GPT-4 and let this thing go. So here we go. It's now running. And you can see, this is why I call it the 2400 baud version, because you can kind of read it. And this is actually kind of fast for GPT-4 right now, but you can read this as it's dumping it out. Right now it's being a little speedy, which is nice. I have noticed, actually, in the past few days, GPT-4 has been peppier. I think that they have either added more comp compute power behind the scenes or dumbed it down so that it could deliver faster results to compete with Meta because Meta is getting so much attention right now. So I'm not sure which way. Uh, right now, it still seems smart enough like the code delivers is good. Now, here we go. We have full results, right? Now, I'm not going to go ahead and read all this, but this will be in the video so you can go ahead and read this as you want. So I'll scroll kind of slow. But the important part of this is to see all the information that it gave and how quickly it wrote it out. So it took a while, but it gave me really in-depth information and gave me a nice little bit of code snippet here to do everything that I want to do, and then some notes. So now let's take this and run this in Claude. So Claude is the AI system from Anthropic. Now I'm doing this on the free version. This isn't the paid one, so I don't expect this to be as fast, but I really just wanted to introduce Claude and Anthropic so you guys can kind of know about another AI to play with. And it does a pretty good job at, at delivering results as well. So here we go. Now, one thing it does say is you can notice here, it says Claude does not have the ability to run the code that it generates yet. This is something that OpenAI's ChatGPT does really well, is you can tell it to generate a program and then run it internally and then deliver the results and it'll do the whole thing behind the scenes. So here we go. So now Claude's done, delivered nice results here. Um, now let's go over to Gemini. This is the one, man, Gemini just always gives me like not really the best results, but let's just see what happens. Again, we're really just focusing on speed. I'm not going into the details of what it's telling me to do here. But one of the bonuses that you're getting from this podcast is in the prompt that I've given. So if you are a Fordrock Identity Cloud person and you're looking to migrate backend apps, with the Identity Gateway, there is a header uh, configuration setup that you can do to mar marshal the headers that deliver from when it comes in from the cloud to the backend app, and it can kind of act like a little mini orchestrator. So here we go, we have that, we have all the code. Okay, explanation, recommended for tuning. Cool, so it's giving me a lot of good stuff here. So now we're gonna do Meta's AI. So this is on Llama 3, here we go. So now watch, now Meta, this is the 14.4 version. So what's interesting, now Llama 3 is running a little bit slower than I think it, than it used to. So it's probably because it has a lot more demand on it. And OpenAI has increased GPT-4 to be faster. So they're actually getting a little bit, they're, they're kind of meeting in the middle. Still way faster than GPT-4, as you can see, already done. Now, this is where I really wanted to get to, Grok. Grok is now running on their proprietary LPUs. And as you can see here in the top right, it's running Llama 3 as the LLM. So this is the exact same LLM as Meta's. And um, it has, uh, uh, screw it, I'm just gonna run it because this is just nuts. You ready? Here we go. And done. <laughs> it's insane. It did 900 tokens per second. It delivered the whole thing. Here we go. Here's the full results of what to do. Here's the script and everything. Here's the header transformation scripts to use. This is rad. So this is this Grok chat that you're seeing is the exact same AI backend that Meta AI is using. The only difference is the hardware that it's running on. So these LPUs that Grok is making are transformative in a massive sense. They've been getting a ton of hype online from all the AI enthusiasts, as you can see why. But what's really crazy is 
what's going to be how people are going to incorporate these things. Now, these LPU chip, these LPU chips that Grok is making are expensive. Not going to lie, you're not going to just go to run to Micro Center or Best Buy and pick one of these things up, or you know, buy one on Amazon. Although maybe you might be able to buy one on Amazon. I don't know, but um, these things go for like I think around like forty grand. So they are expensive. But if you are an enterprise and you want to build a local LLM that you own and host internally, that you have a rag on the side with all of your internal documentation and code that it uses so you don't actually have to find train your AI LLM against your personal data set, and it's all siloed so no one outside has access to it, and you put a Grok LPU on this thing, you can then develop unlimited applications to have real-time access and inference against these LLMs that are all trained or ragged against your data sets, all privately in your cloud or in your data center, not going to the outside network at all. So this is what's amazing to me is that I know every enterprise wants to have AI, but they're blocking it, right? You try to go to OpenAI or you try to go to MetaAI from within your company, it's blocked. Why? Because the companies do not want internal data pasted into these external models because that everything you paste in those models gets trained on, which means they keep it so it, that data could get spit out to other people when they ask questions similarly. So that's why it's really important that they block those from this. But they obviously they want to have the ability to have that power. So this is what's amazing, and this is what I'm really hoping that you guys understand. If you are an enterprise and you wish that you had the power of ChatGPT internally to your company and trained on all of your internal data, but you wanted to have control over it, and you can even fine tune it. So you can say, these people in these department have access to this level of data, you can do that. We actually do that here at Nidus. We actually set up local LLMs within enterprises tied with your personal data we could even, if you want to buy the the Grok data, the Grok LPUs, we'll even help you hook that up. But we help enterprises build their own private AIs so you can leverage real time LLM without sharing your data externally. That is power that your competition will not have. And you don't need a thousand consultants to come in to do it. We can do it with one person in just a couple weeks. It's really not that difficult. So it's pretty awesome, but it's definitely because of a crap ton of smart people behind this thing figuring stuff out so check out grok grok.com it is amazing